Thanks for tuning in today. I'd love to begin a conversation with you about how to mitigate America's achievement gap by creating a mathematical mindset. But before we get started, first, we have to define what the achievement gap is. The achievement gap is defined as any persistent disparity in academic performance between different groups of students or the unequal distribution of educational results. Now, often we see achievement gaps in lots of different groups and closing the achievement gap is widely considered to be one of the major challenges facing American public higher education. The achievement gap relates to the concept of equity, of, of fairness in education and equal access to learning opportunities. So what groups do you see achievement gaps in? Well, perhaps um, the most common group that you observe achievement gaps in are maybe American students versus students from other countries, or women versus men, or majority students versus minority students. We often see high performance among Asian and white Americans versus Hispanic and African Americans. You also see achievement gaps sometimes between able students or disabled students. Um, or even those who are native English speakers versus non-native English speakers. Across the gamut in our higher education system, we see these achievement gaps, and they often show up in the field of mathematics uh, quite frequently. What causes the achievement gap then? Right, so we see these differences among our students. What do we think the root cause is? Well, believe it or not, the number one issue is poverty in America. It's highly correlated with performance of low performing and, and high performing groups. Secondly, often minority status causes that, maybe stereotype threat or ethnic biases. We also see causes that relate to ineffective teaching and low quality schools. Many of these that tend to be located maybe in the inner city versus suburban schools. There's also a disproportionate representation of minority students in some of the poorest performing schools. So this also leads to achievement gaps that we see in our country. In 2012, there was a study called Generation STEM, and it asked what do girls say about science, technology, engineering, and mathematics? And in particular, it wanted to know why is it that girls don't go into these fields? Well, the first thing they said was that teenage girls often don't feel welcome in STEM classrooms and in the mathematics classroom. Secondly, they said that they don't see the connection between what they're learning and what they want to do in real life. And the third reason why they didn't go into mathematics or STEM was because they don't have role models. They don't have teachers that look like them or see people pursuing uh, engineering and mathematics and computer science that look like them. So what are some things that we can begin to do to address this problem in our country? Well, we can resolve the achievement gap, I believe, by developing a mathematical mindset. Carol Dweck is the famous author of the book Mindset, has a great TED talk on the same topic, and she talks about creating a growth mindset versus a fixed mindset. She defines it as the following. She says, in a fixed mindset, People believe that their basic qualities, like their intelligence or talent, are simply fixed traits. They spend their time documenting their intelligence or talent instead of developing them. They also believe that talent alone creates success without effort. Whereas in a growth mindset, Carol says, people believe that their most basic abilities can be developed through dedication and hard work. Brains and talent are just the starting point. This view creates a love of learning and a resilience that is essential for great accomplishment. Virtually all great people have had these qualities. So let's break that down a minute. What does that look like in real life? A fixed mindset versus a growth mindset? Well, a fixed mindset person might tend to avoid challenges or give up easily. They may also tend to believe that they're threatened by other success. On the other hand, those with a growth mindset embrace challenges. They often persist in spite of obstacles. They learn from criticism and they're inspired by other success. So how can we bring this into the mathematics classroom? Or maybe it's already there. She actually gives examples pertaining directly to math. 
And I know I've been guilty of saying this in my own classroom, having sort of putting a fixed mindset on my students by telling them, you know, not everybody's good in math, just do your best. Or, you know what, that's okay, maybe math just isn't one of your strong suits. Well, believe it or not, when I talk to my students like this, it forces a fixed mindset on them. It tells them that mathematics is an ability that either you have or you don't. What I should say on the other hand is, when you learn how to do a new kind of problem, it grows your math brain. Or if you catch yourself saying, I'm not a good math person, just add the word yet. Or if you catch yourself saying, I'm not a math person, just add the word yet at the end of that sentence. I'm not a math person yet. Other ways that we can resolve the achievement gap is by communicating high expectations with support. She gives examples of what we as educators can actually say in the classroom. Things like, this is challenging but rewarding. Or, as you learn this, mistakes are expected. Let's make mistakes together. Or even phrases like, be sure to communicate with me your progress so I can provide support to you. It's interesting that in our classroom, many first generation students don't know that you know, their, the office hours are open and they're welcome to come to their professors. I had a student in particular who never came to see me and at the end of the course, I wondered why he performed so poorly. I said, why didn't you come to office hours? He said, I didn't wanna bother you. I'm paid to help you, come bother me, I wanna know. And so just by creating a space in my classroom where I welcome feedback and I welcome students to communicate with me and intentionally sought out how to encourage folks who might not have been familiar with the college standard on my campus. Clifford Adelman from the U.S. Department of Education did a study in 1999 where he looked at previous data of high school students and he looked at each of their subjects to see how their subjects were correlated with their success in college, whether they finish college with any degree. And what he found was mathematics was the highest indicator of college success. In fact, he found that nearly 46% of students who completed Algebra II as their highest level of math graduated with an undergraduate degree. When you look at fields like trigonometry, he saw that 60, almost 65% of those students graduated with a bachelor's degree and 82% of students that took calculus graduated with a bachelor's degree. So why is that? Why is it just correlated with math? Why not English or physics or any other subject? Why is it that the highest level of math indicated whether you got a degree as an undergraduate student in any subject? Well, I argue that success in mathematics inherently forces you to have a growth mindset. It forces you to embrace those challenges. The more that we can encourage students to pursue mathematics, the more we can invite them to the mathematical table, that we can challenge them, but encourage them and let them know that those challenges are really growing their brain, the better they become overall, the more successful they are in any uh, subject that they choose to pursue. So what can you do? Well, when we think about creating a, a growth mindset in folks that we interact with, one thing that we can do is what I call random acts of verbal encouragement. By verbally encouraging students to pursue more mathematics, to take challenging courses, but also to support them, we can actually increase student retention and decrease the achievement gap. You can be the one who makes a difference in the life of a student. Thank you.